Hi there. Welcome to this lesson on Pure Mathematics 3. And in this lesson, we're looking at the trigonometric addition formulae. Now, what are they? Well, first of all, they're frequently called the addition identities because each one of them is an identity. Uh, for example, the first one, the sine of two angles added together, sine A plus B is identical to sine A cos B plus cos A sine B. And the identity sign means that this statement is always true for every value of A and B. The sine of one angle take away another angle is the sine of the first angle times by the cosine of the second angle. Take away the cosine of the first angle, take away the sine of the second angle. Same as the previous one, uh, just changing the sine in the middle. The cosine of A plus B is cos A cos B, take away sine A sine B. And the cosine of A minus B is cos A cos B plus sine A sine B. If you're trying to remember them, it's worth noting that the plus on the left-hand side is matched on the right-hand side for the sine formulae. But for the cosine formulae, the signs are opposite to each other. So when you have plus on the left-hand side, you have minus on the right-hand side. And the same with the second one. The formulae for tan are a little bit more complicated. The tangent of two angles added together, tan of A plus B is the same as tan A plus tan B, all divided by one take away tan A tan B. And if you have the tangent of one angle, take away another one. Again, it's the same formula, but the signs swap over. So the plus changes to minus on the top, and the minus changes to plus. Now, in the exam, you'll have a formula book that does have these formulae written inside it. Nevertheless, it is worth learning them. And for the sake of this lesson, if you don't have them near at hand, it would be worth pausing the video and just quickly writing them down. Okay. The first example, using these formulae, try to prove that the sine of A plus B times by the sine of A minus B is identical to sine squared A take away sine squared B. Have a go yourselves first, pause the video, come back to me when you're ready. Okay, we'll have a look at this. Now there are no tricks or catches in this particular question. If you're trying to prove an identity, you start with one side or the other. I think it's definitely easier to start with the left-hand side in this particular question, which is sine A plus B times by sine A minus B. And then we want to manipulate this expression until it's identical to what we have on the right-hand side in the question. So we're trying to change this into sine squared A minus sine squared B. And the way we'll do that is just use the two identities, the one for sine A plus B and the one for sine A minus B. And that'll give us sine A cos B plus cos A sine B, multiplied by sine A cos B, take away cos A sine B. We do need to multiply those brackets. We get a lot of terms. And it doesn't look very promising initially. We'll get sine squared A cos squared B minus that large term, plus that large term, take away cos squared A times by sine squared B. Now, if you look at these two large terms in the middle, all of them have exactly the same four things in. They all have sine A, sine B, cos A, and cos B in. So they do just cancel each other out. And we're left with sine squared A, cos squared B, take away cos squared A, sine squared B. Now, at this point, I think I would glance at what we're trying to get. We're trying to get sine squared A minus sine squared B. There are no causes on the right-hand side in the question which suggests we want to get rid of the causes from what we have here. Well, we can do that using sine squared plus cos squared equals one, which means that cos squared is equal to one minus sine squared b. So substituting that in for cos squared will give us this. Then multiplying out those brackets, we'll get sine squared a minus sine squared a sine squared b minus sine squared b plus sine squared a times sine squared b. And again, these two terms are exactly the same. One is minus, one is plus. They'll cancel each other out. And we are left with what we wanted to get. The sine squared of A take away the sine squared of B. So at that point, we've proved that the left-hand side of the identity is identical to the right-hand side. We've done what we were asked to do. And we could just write QED at this point. Example two. This one is slightly more tricky. There's one step in particular that's quite hard to guess, but I'll let you have a go yourselves first. So the question says, given that two sine x plus y is equal to three times the cosine of x minus y, 
try to express tan x in terms of tan y. Now, those are the two identities we'll be using underneath, the sine of a plus b and the cos of a minus b. I'll let you have a go yourself first. As I say, this one is a bit more difficult, but have a go, pause the video, come back to me when you're ready. Okay, let's have a look at this. So using those two identities, first of all, the sine of x plus y is sine x cos y plus cos x sine y. And then on the right hand side, the cos of x minus y will be cos x cos y plus sine x sine y. Multiplying out the brackets will give us that. And this is the line which is really not obvious. But the best thing to do at this point is to divide through the whole equation by cos x times by cos y. And the reason why we do that becomes obvious once we've done it. It's not particularly obvious before we do it. So that's what we're going to do. Divide every single term by cos x times by cos y. And the reason why we do that is various things happen, all of which are useful. These cos y's will cancel with each other. These cos x's will cancel with each other. Both cos x and cos y cancel in the third term. And in this final term, nothing cancels, but we do get sine x divided by cos x and sine y divided by cos y. And those will change to tan x and tan y, which feels promising because the question asked us to express tan x in terms of tan y. And these remaining two terms here as well also include a two tan x there and a two tan y there. So changing all of those things, that very quickly simplifies to 2 tan x plus 2 tan y is equal to 3 plus 3 tan x times by tan y. Rearranging that will give us this, and then factorizing to take tan x out on its own. And we know we want to do that because it says in the question we have to get tan x on its own and express it in terms of tan y. So taking tan x out the brackets will give us tan x into 2 minus 3 tan y is equal to 3 minus 2 tan y. And then dividing through, we have tan x is equal to 3 minus 2 tan y divided by 2 minus 3 tan y. And that is what the question asked us to do. It asked us to express tan x in terms of tan y. And that's what we have there. Tan x is the subject of the equation. Okay, that is the end of the lesson. If you have the textbook, turn to page 73 and have a go at exercise 4a. Thank you very much for listening and cheerio.